Hello again. Thank you for being here. It's because of you why my channel is growing at a lovely steady pace and I'm really, really grateful for that. And this video is all about how a stop system works on a little engine that uses an ignition coil like that on a small petrol lawnmower. So let's get to it. So it may come as no surprise whatsoever that the conductible core of the stop wire is usually made of copper. We'll have to take a look at the smallest part of the copper, the copper atom. Whilst it's got 29 electrons that orbit its centre nucleus, it's this electron that exists alone on the outside of all of them that each time the magnetic field of the flywheel's fixed magnet passes some of the copper coiled wire inside the coil pack. This lone outer electron is pushed on forward away from the atom by that magnetic field. This is pushed towards the next atom. Now of course the magnet moving past the wire wouldn't just move the electron from one atom, it would move the electrons from billions. I'm just making this simple example. If we imagine the electrical circuit being in a loop like this, then we can now imagine that when a stimulus moves one electron from an atom across to the next atom, then that's going to keep going on as like a chain reaction down the system, creating a movement of electrons in this certain direction. And this is what we call electron flow. This is the electrical current. As the magnetic field pushes those electrons forward out of the coil, through the HT lead and into the spark plug, down the special conductive core of the plug, they arc across the gap. And as they arc across the gap, that's creating the spark. And they instantly move through the outer grounded area of the spark plug and into the engine body. As long as the electrons use this specific route to ground, there'll always be a spark. But that's not something we want to happen all of the time. Because to turn off an engine, such as the one on this little petrol lawnmower, we need to turn off the spark. And removing the spark ultimately means that we'll have to get these electrons to take a different route through to ground rather than through the spark plug. And this is where the kill wire or the stop wire comes in. Because the stop wire has a direct connection from the coil to the engine ground. And between the two of course there's the stop switch. We can see the stop wire or the kill wire, the earth wire, where it connects to the unit which is in direct contact with the coil within. At the moment, the on-off switch is in the on position, breaking any contact to the engine ground. So when the coil generates its electric current, the electrons can only sense ground this way through the spark plug. And that's of course the reason they naturally flow there. But when the electrical current inside the coil is generated, the electrons want to use the most easy and direct route to ground. And that means that when the stop switch is in the off position, creating a direct link to ground, then this now becomes the most favourable and direct route for the electrons to reach ground. And that means if the electrons are finding ground this way, then they are not going this way and arcing across the spark plug gap in order to find the ground, thus creating the spark. So that's now stopped the spark from occurring and stopped the engine. But the question is, why don't the electrons, or at least some of the electrons, still want to come this way? Because after all, there's still a ground here. Well, remember I said a few moments ago that the electrons want the most direct and quickest route to ground. And therefore, because of this, they will always choose the stop wire, because that has direct physical contact between the coil and ground. Whereas this way, there's no direct physical contact to ground because of the spark plug gap. And so the attraction of ground for the electrons would be weaker through the spark plug and so a stronger pull there for the electrons. When I say pull, I don't mean physically pulling the electrons to ground, but more of the electrical attraction that the electrons have for the ground. And so when the stop switch is in the on position, breaking any physical route to ground whatsoever, then the electrons will be attracted to the next best ground, and that's the ground through the gap of the spark plug. How does this all relate to engine failures? Well, quite a common cause can be down to the kill wire itself. 
because if there's any breakage in the wire or outer insulation damage, allowing the center core that carries all that electron flow to contact the engine block, then all of those electrons are going to take that quickest route to ground, rather than through the spark plug. And of course when this happens, we call it a short in the stop wire. And that's of course if the short is between the coil and the stop switch, because if it's lower than the stop switch, then it's just another grounding, it's not a problem. And a quick and simple way to test to see if it is the kill wire that's actually shorting on the block is to just disconnect the kill wire. It's important that the kill wire is disconnected at the coil, rather than the other end at the switch. Because disconnecting it from the coil will eliminate any possible shortage or breakages in the wire that are touching the block along the whole length of the kill wire. Disconnecting it from the switch might not be sufficient to detect a problem along the length of the wire from the coil to the switch. It could still be shorting out on the engine block somewhere between those two points. So if we go ahead and remove the kill wire from the coil, and then the engine starts, then you can pretty much guarantee that the kill wire was shorting into the engine block somewhere between the coil and the switch. But assuming that there's no problem with the kill wire itself, it can't be ruled out that the switch and the earthing mechanisms involved in the switch aren't somehow faulty and they are causing the short. So in other words, it's just earthing out when it shouldn't be. I know it's took me a little while to get to this point and I could have done this much quicker, but the whole essence of this video and my other videos is to give you a deeper understanding why these things are happening. So I really appreciate you watching this through to the end and if you have any comments to further this, then please do comment below, I'd love to hear them. In the meantime, I'll be back soon. Thank you for watching.